They often say she's an ageless wonder. Her love for life makes this lady tick. When a young man looks at Madame, she just throws herself right at him. She's young at heart and still getting her kicks. And that man plays, she's a prime time queen. She throws her stuff on a TV screen. Her outrageous charm fills this funny farm that we call Madame Play. years a senior when we dated. I thought I'd never graduate. Oh, and here's Biff. When I met him, he was 19 and I was pushing up. Oh, his friends accused him of robbing the grave. What, Adam? Can you believe it, Pinky? How I always pick men who are wrong for me? Why, years ago, I picked them too old. Now I pick them too young or too self-centered or just too plain late. What, Adam? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I always pick jerks who are wrong for me. Like the last one I almost married who was too young. Madam, are you all right? Yes, Pinky. Did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard what you said, but why are you bringing it up now all of a sudden? Well, you All not... your life you've chased after younger men. Who else would insure their lovers for scraped knees? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a big cabin. I don't know all the answers. All I know about my love life is... I feel so gray in a melancholy way that I mock as well be sprung. Well, if you're serious about your problem, we could call someone. No one has to know. Someone? Yes. You know, a professional. <gasps> you mean a shrink? Are you saying I need a shrink? Why, don't be silly. I need a shrink like Anne Hype and Margaret needs a last name. Well, Madam, you were the one that... Oh, called... my own Pinkerton thinks I'm crazy. Oh, my gosh, do you think I'm crazy? No, I don't think you're crazy. He does. What does he know? Oh, my. You're right. You're right. I'm mad. It's all over. Think me out. Oh, my brain's sick of the 301 to Yuma. Coil over. I'll let you to have a little. I don't have a snake pit to hit in. Now, <laughs> here I come. <laughs> Under no circumstances will I see a shrink. Billy Barty did, and look what happened to him. <laughs> Do you think Auntie Madam has really lost her marbles? Well, I think she's at least misplaced them. Don't you think it is? No, I do not. Sarah Joy, Madam is just down on herself because she can't seem to have a relationship with a mature man. Well, I'm worried about her. When she left the house this morning, she had a real funny look in her eyes. Oh, yes, I know. I remember the last time I saw that look was when her second marriage failed. What happened? She went down to the marina, painted nautical stripes on her body, and asked a strange man to take her out and show her his dinghy. Oh, my God. Oh, dear, I wish we knew where she was. I think she could be out there all alone, wandering the cold and dangerous streets. Oh, relax, Bernadette. It's 85 degrees outside. She'll be fine. Oh. Oh, well, I don't know if this means anything, but Barney Wolf may break the four-minute mile. Barney! What's wrong? <laughs> the end. That's what it is. It's the end. Oh, what, what happened? What happened? My bread and butter. Your boss. Your aunt is out on Hollywood Boulevard selling beanies with propellers. What? Hollywood and... Fine. <laughs> She's got a stand set up. Beanies, 25 cents. Well, why didn't you bring her back with you? I tried, I tried, but she wouldn't listen. She kept on babbling about how if she doubled her sales quota, they'd send her to an all-male planet. Well, couldn't you convince her? <laughs> no, no, I couldn't. She's all set to go. She's the next queen of outer space. Oh, no. Come on, Barney. We're going to bring her back whether she likes it or not. I don't think she's going to like it very much, Pinky. But we'll see about that after you. Oh, 
Whatever's wrong with madam, it's just temporary. So don't you worry about a thing, dear, all right? <laughs> oh, my stars! Oh, it finally happened. She snapped. Oh, my goodness, her career is going to go down the tubes, and we're going to go with it. Oh, dear. Oh, oh. Hey, now, Bernie, everything will be okay, I promise. All right. All right, I'll calm down. I'll calm down. I'm calm. <laughs> I mean, these things just happen sometimes, you know. I remember back home in Georgia when my Uncle Charlie died. Well, my Aunt Big Delia, she decided to cremate him by herself. She threw him into the barbecue pit and fired him up. I'll tell you, Mount St. Helen didn't ash like Uncle Charlie. <laughs> of course, the marshmallows were Mama's idea. <laughs> oh, my stars and garters. Oh, dear. Uh oh, what is this? Sarah Joy, look at this. Men I'd like to date. Tom Selleck, Ron Howard, Scott Bayou, Rick Springfield. Oh, my. Why, madam, he's twice the age of all these men. Oh, you know what? I, you know what? I am going to call a psychologist for Good madam. Good idea. Oh, yes, yes. You see, if, if my employer refuses to help herself, then I must do everything in my power to help her. That's the secretary's creed, dear. Psychologist, psychologist, how do you spell psychologist? Bernie, you think I could watch when the psychiatrist comes? It is a psychologist, not a psychiatrist, dear, and no, you may not. Gee, I've never seen a psychologist at work before. <laughs> well, once I was in the room back home when my mama called a radio talk show doctor. She asked him how long would it take to cure somebody who's insane. The doctor said, just one moment, please. Mama said, thank you, and hung up. <laughs> Bernadette? What? Madam is very upset with you that you made that appointment without her approval. Well, someone had to take some action around here. I know it was a difficult decision to make, but one that had to be made. <laughs> Spoken like a true Marine. <laughs> thank you. Sarah Joy, dear, please get up off that couch. Thank you. Auntie Madam thinks that you want to commit her to a funny farm. Oh, that is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Madam signs my paychecks, small as they are. Well, now we all know where your priorities are, Bernadette. You will not get hurt with me, Pinkerton. You know how much I care about Madam's welfare. I think you care most about keeping yourself off welfare. Well, here you say something. Get that. Oh. Oh. What do you want? <laughs> I'm Dr. Joyce Brothers. I'm here to see Madam. Yes, I know. Please forgive me. I didn't mean to be rude. Oh, you needn't apologize. That's fine. I'll tell Madam you're here. She's been expecting you. Thank you very much. Oh, Dr. Brothers, I'm so glad you could come. Oh, it's good to see this you. This is uh, Madam's niece, Sarah Joy, Dr. Brothers. Quack, 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 qu
Oh, you sure are poor, aren't you? Come on, have a swig. <laughs> well, they put in that stuff. Woo! Lord, God Almighty. Pretty good, huh? Come on now, give me a little kiss. Okay, but let me warn you. On the first date, I never let a man go below the Mason Dixon line. <laughs> oh, come on now, girl. Oh. I see what you're doing. Oh, it's full of twinkies. It's my little sister, Marmalina. Hi, Marmalina. I'm telling Mama she's going to put your jeans in the freezer again. Your mama? Oh, no. Why, well, one mean look from that woman can turn a bull in heat into a milk duck. Oh, good gosh, my... Hey, where are you going? It's the haystack. I'll meet you there at 9 o'clock. Which haystack is that? Haystack Hotel. You will. Here, you enjoy this while I go set things up. Yeah, I'll get good and ready. <laughs> well, oh, your sister Marmalina told me you was out here sparking with that Billy Joe Morrison again. Well, Mama, I cannot tell a lie. But in this case, I'd like to make an exception. Oh, girl, you're going to be the death of me yet. Why don't you date a nice boy like that Billy Joe Morrison's brother, Bertram? How? What? Whoa, oh, now oh. here's a nice boy, Bertram. Look at you. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go make you two young and some lemonade. I just love to squeeze them lemons. What? Hi. Uh, I brought you a flower. Oh, well, thank you, Bertram. Mighty pretty. Oh, it had a little vermin in it. Hey, Yuffie. What is it, a stink weed? First of all, how come you so different from your brother, Billy Joe? Well, we both want different things. I, I want to settle down and raise a family. Mm -hmm. Billy Joe don't care about nothing but sparking and moonshine. <laughs> yep, I hate to say this, but I don't think you'll ever amount to anything. Well, I should know for sure about 9.15 tonight. I gotta go, man. Gotta run, Bertram. Gotta go find a needle in a haystack. <laughs> Wait for the wagon. Wait for the wagon. Somebody in the old man to the city. It's a fur piece. I gotta ride now. I hate to say it, but that girl's headed for a troubled life. Oh, Madam. Oh, 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 Madam. Whoa, 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 whoa. How do you feel? Oh, my. I feel exhausted. Like I did the time they spiked my putts with an aphrodisiac and I climbed the Washington Monument, thinking it was my sexual peak. <laughs> <laughs> well, madam, from what you shared with me about your past, I think you'd choose younger men because they're safe. Safe? You call a young man safe? The only thing safe about a young man has been stuck in his wallet for two years. <laughs> I think you're afraid to pick a mature, positive man for fear that he'll run away from you when he discovers you're nothing but a kid. A kid? Nonsense. Madam, I think we should see each other at the same time tomorrow. And I don't think so. Thank you very much, but Before I... Before uh... you make up your mind about quitting therapy, I think you should think about it. I don't have to think about that at all. After all, I am a mature, level-headed woman. Oh, madam, five Ooh. minutes to showtime. All right. Here's the things you wanted for your dressing room. Oh, good. The bubble gum, the glow-in-the-dark yo-yo, and uh, the whistle ring. Quiet enough, P.K. Just put the bag in my dressing room next to my Wonder Woman lunchbox. <laughs> mm -hmm. Madam, same time tomorrow? Well, I think I'll have to let you know about that. Pinky, I'll uh, show her to the window. I haven't got to and take a nap. Gosh, I hope he got the pink bubble gum. I hate that green and gold stuff. <laughs> For those of you wondering why I'm seated here at the piano, well, it's not because I'm trying to fit my weekly lesson in. I do take a weekly lesson, but it's, uh, it has nothing to do with the piano. <laughs> Although, while I'm taking it, I occasionally do hit some high notes. <laughs> No, I'm sitting here because I'm about to have the honor of accompanying my next guest, one of the great opera singers the world has ever known. Please applaud with dignity for Mr. David Workman. Yay, David! Thank <laughs> you. 
thing has words. <laughs> and everything. You know, I would really love to shake your hand. I'd love to shake your head, too. Ah! <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> lucky to possess a marvelous offbeat, unusual sense of humor. And it has kept him very busy in show business. A nice welcome to my good friend, Mr. Fred Willard. Come on in, Fred. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Well, exactly Hello, Hello, madam. You look lovely. Thank you. It's so nice to have you on my show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. It really is. Yes, I know you like to do shows like this, don't you? Yes, yes. And it, out of it, love and... Well, it has to be out of love. It's certainly not for the money. <laughs> Start that. I know you're doing real well. well you're all real people. Yeah, all... the trouble there, they don't pay us with real cash. Oh, I... <laughs> Listen, you know, I, I, I wanted to know, I, I'd like to get on that show. Do you think I can get on Real We'd People? We'd love to have you on Real People, but we only use people who do uh, weird, far-out things. Well, my little pet snake's eating at your foot right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I've never had any complaints about being weird. No. <laughs> I bubblehead quite a lot. <laughs> uh, oh, I, I know you're just full of all those little quips and things to tell us. So oh, yeah. I, if you'd just like to uh, wheel out there with some of them. I, I would know. love to because it, with real people, we travel a, a lot. I have not been in Las Vegas, but I just flew in from Chicago, and I have to fly out to San Francisco this evening. As a matter of fact, we, they keep us traveling so much, I never know when my next meal is coming from. I and speaking of which, mean. I wonder if I could have a, a little cup of coffee or a, a cup of hot tea or something, cup, just to uh, keep me going. I hate to... Uh, Sarah Joy, you got any coffee or tea uh, for Fred? Yes. I would appreciate well, that. That'll be very but, nice. You know, traveling... Uh, oh, oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now we've set. Now, On now second we've thought... Um, Coffee or tea is going to keep me awake. I don't want to keep awake during your show. Oh. <laughs> no, seriously, if I can have a little fruit juice or a uh, something carbonated, a sweet drink, maybe a ginger. Yes, yeah, so I think there's some crab apple. That would be Thank good, you. yeah. Because <laughs> when you travel a lot, they give you that airline food, and it's, it's just murder. Anyway, I was yes, coming I in from um, from it. Chicago, uh, and I was doing a story there on a what appeared to be a motorcycle gang. Oh. You're not going to believe this. Oh, wonderful. Uh, before I get going, can I have something to kind of nibble on? A, do you have crackers or a little uh, something uh, like bread? or? Uh, well, maybe, Sarah Joy, if you got anything out there, maybe uh, do you have some, some bread? buns. Buns? Yes. Oh, she's got buns. Yes. <laughs> anything, if you can slice them, put a slice of meat in between them, anything just to kind of... Yeah, keep something on my... How about yeah, the gang, uh, the motorcycle? They're a motorcycle gang, and of course, all I see coming down the highway mm. are these with motorcycle hats on, the, yeah, with jackets and leather jackets, um, and they stop, and they take off their helmets, and they've got clerical collars on. They're, they're priests and they're ministers. Uh, Excuse me. Um, you know, I, uh, could you make an omelet... Do you have some cheese? Could you use the cheese you're going to use in the sandwich? Whip of a little omelet. A cheese omelet. I would love that. And then the toast. Or just the plain white bread. So well, for a time, from, I didn't know they were ministers or priests and the bystanders didn't. So you can imagine this picture. Did I'm they know sorry, they were? Can you make eggs, Benedict? <laughs> Madam, I don't know how to make eggs, Benedict. I get a couple of English muffins. And you just poach two eggs. Can you poach eggs? Oh, uh, well, yeah. we can do anything. To you poach a enough. couple of eggs. Uh, put them yeah. out. We're going to make this order to go. Bernays yeah. sauce. <laughs> not too, not too runny. Do you know what I mean? And the, the English problems don't burn them. I'd like them from the eggs, kind of from the Bernays sauce. Oh, Bernays. And uh, yeah. oh, my uh, time is up. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd like to talk more. Wait a minute. Well, Let I'm me give you a little something for your waitress. Okay. You know I'll be sure you get that. Right. <laughs> That's wonderful. Well. Looks like she's her old self again. I hope so. But you can never tell. So join me tomorrow night when my special guest will be Lucius Androgowitz, author of that great book, Divorce and... Um... Divor divorce and, um... Well, what's wrong with her? Uh... 
for me after 25 years. I can't believe it. I've never seen Angie Adams so nervous before. She's tried on five different perfumes. She's beginning to smell like a French swan. Well, it's all because she's going to have dinner with Pinkerton tonight, and he's not going to beat the butler. Will you ever forget that carriage ride through Central Park in New York City? Ah, uh, how can I forget? We stopped the driver, made him get out, and walk with us around the lake. That's right. When we got back, the horse was up on blocks. His shoes had been stolen. 